What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the blue portion of uh, the Rivals of Ixalan set review here on YouTube or uh, Twitch if you're watching us live. And uh, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. You can slam them right down below. Today we're going to be looking at the blue. I say today, but we're, you, you know, it's the same day as when we looked at the white. Just going up a different time. And uh, starting with Admiral's Orders. Not, I, I should get a couple of these cards and have them altered to be Admiral's Orders. And I can just give them to my buddy Nathan. And... Uh, Otherwise known as that's admirable, and uh, he can he can have a bunch of admirables orders. That'd be sweet. I don't I don't know how I feel about this card. It's better than cancel, right? Uh, it's not better than disallow. So it's kind of like right in the middle. So I don't know. Like if you attack with a creature this turn, you may pay blue rather than pay the spell's casting cost. Sir. Sure. So like, I attack with a guy. I play my... It's on turn five. I attack with a guy. I play my four drop. You try to counter it. Then I counter back. Okay. That's fine. Um, I'm not that excited about turning my... You're basically turning your cancel into a spell pierce. Right? If you attack with a guy. For raid, you're turning your cancel into a spell pierce. Presumably. Or a stubborn denial or something. Right? Something... A one mana counter spell. Which is fine. But... I don't know if it's exciting. Like, it's not super exciting to me. Like, I would rather play Disallow over this card, right? I'll just wait until I can actually hard counter with Disallow or just counter an activated or uh, triggered ability with a Disallow. So, uh, yeah, it can counter their flash creatures. But it can counter them anyway. Like, it doesn't... You don't even need the raid ability, right? Like, you could just pay three and do that. Um, but, I don't know. It's a good counter spell. I think anything that, that anything that is better than anything that's better than cancel with an upside and it has a cool ability, I'm on board. I'll 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 try it. Because there are gonna be niche situations where this is great. Right? So or like, you know, if you have a you have your big uh Damn the cannons mates charge. Okay, that's that's something right there. I'm I'm surprised they put damn in, in magic flavor text. That's kinda of funny. But so, like, let's say you have your big control finisher, right? Like, your 7-7 seven, seven island walking guy. And you're like, oh, attack with it. And then they're like, kill it. And you're like, Admiral's Orders. And then they're like, kill it again. And you're like, Admiral's Orders. You know, it's... And then, like, counter your spell. And you're like, Admiral's Orders. And it's it's nice to be able to get in, in those, into those kind of counter spell wars on your turn when you're able to always counter them with Admiral's Orders. But if you don't have a creature that's attacking, you can't. You have to draw multiples Admiral's Orders to make that a, a realistic scenario. So, I don't know. I think this card's good, but not great doesn't overwhelm me uh, i'm not i'm not in favor of playing it over other counter spells that do similar things that are more versatile but uh meh, i don't hate it aquatic incursion four mana for an enchantment when it enters the battlefield make two one ones that's good because it doesn't do it doesn't do nothing and then it's a you know those that they have hexproof and target merfolk can't be blocked this turn I can see why this is uncommon. This is a, this is obviously an uncommon. I don't think it's even that bad because you're making two one one hexproof creatures for four mana, and then the you know the target. This might as well. This could be like just a sorcery that makes two one one blue merfolk for for four, um, and then target merfolk can't be blocked this turn. It's kind of just gravy. So I think this card's fine. Um, I don't think you're gonna play in constructed obviously, but I think you'd take it in limited. I mean, this is just gonna close out limited games pretty quickly. Like just make your your four four or uh five five merfolk unblockable or if you're uh you know putting all your counters on guys with like you know rivers rivers blessing is river blessing is that what's called but yeah it's pretty good i mean it's or it's fine i mean it's fine for limited you're never gonna play this in constructed you're just not gonna spend four mana to make two one ones and then four mana to make one dude unblockable that's just never happening but yeah in limited it's fine Crafty Cut Purse. Uh, four mana for a 2-2 with Flash. Okay. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, each token that will be created under an opponent's control this turn is created under your control instead. My biggest problem with this... River Herald's Boon. That's what, that's what it is. That's, that's the card we're looking for. Um, my biggest problem with this is like... For four mana, the payoff has to be real good. Like, if they're playing a Spectral Procession, cool. I'll take three 1-1 one, one Flyers all day. But, like, if they have a Bitter Blossom, you're just like... Alright, I'll make one dude. Or if they have, you know, the... Uh, you know, this is probably for, like, 
treasures, like the broken treasure cards that are like, make a treasure for every land you control. And you're like, haha, I'll steal all your treasure. Like clearly a crafty cut purse is going to steal treasures and not creatures. Cause that's, it's a cut purse, you know? Um, but I don't know. Maybe it depends on like, this is not going to, I don't, this is a very unique card. It feels very notion thiefy. And, uh, I want to live in a world where my opponent makes a merit lage and then I can steal it with a crafty cut purse. That's the world I want to live in. They go merit lage. I go, ha ha, cut purse. Mm. And then I'm like, steal your merit lage because that's in your pocket. <laughs> and then you're like, that doesn't make any sense flavor wise. But, you know, okay, sure. You got you got it. I'll concede now because that's pretty, pretty good. Yeah. All right. Also, I mean, like, this is good against... I mean, it's not great against, like, Splinter Twin combos because they'll just stop making guys. You'd be like, okay, make a token, and then they're like, Crafty Cup Burst, and you're like, okay, you get the token. Uh, go ahead. Your turn. All right, you'll just do it next turn, won't you? Okay. So it's not a great It's not a great answer. It's a temporary answer, kind of just like um, the the one blue... The, one, the white card that was, like, no instants or sorceries. I forgot what it was called already because I just didn't care. All right, but next card, Crashing Tide, three mana for a sorcery. It is, has flash as long as you control Merfolk, which is already tempting to me. I love it when sorceries have flash. Return a creature to its owner hand and draw a card. This card's, I'm a big fan of this card. I don't think it's going to see playing constructed because it's three mana. But drawing a card is nice, and returning a dude to its hand to, their, to its owner's hand is nice. And the odds of you having a Merfolk is, it's pretty easy to do. So I don't, I don't see that really being a, a in. A, a limiting factor so yeah amazing and limited maybe uh repulse i'll play in constructed but repulse also didn't require you to have a merfolk to play it at instant speed but i think i think the formats were also less aggressive back when repulse was played like this is not standard now is not the same as standard was when repulse was playable so um, but I mean, yeah, like I said, who knows this card? I like the card. I think it's cool. Curious obsession one blue, uh, whenever a creature gets plus one plus one and enchanted creature gets plus one plus one and has whenever this creature does combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. Okay. So basically like a, like a keen sense at the beginning of your end step. If you didn't attack with a creature this turn, sacrifice it. Oh God. It's aggressive. I mean, ideally, you're just going to put this on, like, your 1-1 one, one unblockable Merfolk. So, uh, make it a 2-2, two, two, draw a card, and then, like, just hope you can attack every single turn. Otherwise, your curious obsession goes away. You're no longer obsessed. You're no longer that curious, I guess. So, what up, Chris? Nifty, nifty Chris. Nifty, superfluous rhetoric Chris. Um, I mean, I don't think this card's going to... This card has no home. This card has no home, right? I guess if you can put on a flyer, like even on a flyer, it's pretty good if they don't have a way to block it. Like I'd play this in limited, definitely. Uh, especially if you have unblockable or flying guys, but I mean, it's, it's a little fickle. It's a little fickle and I don't know if it's standard worthy, but dead eye rig hauler four mana for a three, two raid when it enters the battlefield if you attack with a creature you may return target creature to understand this this is a card i like i don't know if i like it for standard because four mana for a three two is not great and ogre savant uh was rarely played in standard as a three two for five um but i mean again if the pirate deck is good and you need you need a bounce ability like this could be a fine four drop playing a three two bouncing your guy it's just a mana war for one more mana with an extra power Sometimes that's good enough. So, I don't know. We'll see. Again, like, it depends on what the pirate deck looks like, if there is a pirate deck. So, Expel from Orazka. Two mana for a card with Ascend. It's an instant with Ascend. Return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. If you have the city's blessing, you'll put that permanent on top of its owner's library instead. This is actually just fine. I mean, you're gonna play a bounce. You're gonna play a bounce spell for two mana most of the time anyway. If you need that kind of thing, uh, it's like this. It's like a card you're gonna play one of and limited anyway. I don't know if this is gonna be constructible because there's a lot more options that are more versatile than this. But I think it's gonna be easier to get the city's blessing and like a, a blue con control deck. So maybe you just want to put 
a planeswalker on top of their library so you can counter it the next turn or uh, i don't know I'm trying to see the silver lining here i don't think this card's bad i mean i think it's just a, it's just a a, a non-land boomerang without a send but it gives you the option to get the city's blessing and make it a little bit better which is fine so i'm okay with it yeah it's a, it's it's literally just a better disperse right so i mean like disperse is return online permanent and this is return online permanent get the city's blessing maybe which could also affect like a ton of things uh, that happen in your deck, right? Like if you have another, a bunch of other cards that need the city's blessing or have a, uh... the interesting thing about the city's blessing is that all of the cards, I think to the best of my knowledge, all the cards that have interactions with the city's blessing give you the city's blessing, right? So like, there's never going to be a card that says like, that doesn't have a send, but it says, Hey, if you have the city's blessing, gain 10 life, but they, they, it's going to have a send on it. So it's going to give you a chance to get the city's blessing, right? So that's interesting to me, um, and I do think yeah, like if if the I I don't think the uh, depending on how good the energy decks are come Monday, uh, this could see a home in there because it's very easy to get ten permanents on board. But uh, eh. we'll see. I have a feeling uh, energy is not going to be surviving in the same form it is now, but uh, I don't know. Flood of Recollection two blue for a sorcerer return an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand and then exile. Flood of Recollection. So. Hmm. <laughs> eh, like, there's a lot of powerful instants or sorceries. And a card like Time Warp uh, still goes to the graveyard. I know a lot of the future time to you know, turn-taking spells like Temporal Mastery or uh, Temporal Manipulation. Is that what it's called? Temporal. The three, the three blue one with Delve. The Delve one. They all exile themselves. Um, so you're not going to be able to get that back. But Time Warp itself, you can still get back with a Flood of Recollection because that guy just goes to the graveyard. Um, which is interesting. So I think there's definitely, like, instants and sorceries, especially in older formats like Modern, are definitely strong enough that you might just want to get one back, even if you're just getting, like, a cryptic command back with this. Um, it's, it's, it's very similar to Snapcaster Mage in that way where you're paying two mana to be able to buy back. You don't get the, um, the, the, you know, the surprise instant ability. It's also not, it's not a Snapcaster Mage by any means because you're not going to get two one. But sometimes you do just have a, uh, strong enough target in your graveyard that you want to get back. And, and, like, if you get, if you get, if you play Time Warp, then you Flood of Recollection and play Time Warp, you can still Snapcaster Mage and play Time Warp again. So that's three Time Warps. And... I don't know. Obviously, I'm getting hung up on Time Warp because I like a good Time Warp, but, you know, I, I think this card has merit. And, I, you know, when they put Exile Flood of Recollection on it, I think they know how good it would be to keep recycling this card. Like, you want to go Flood of Recollection, Snapcaster Mage Flood of Recollection because that's kind of strong. So, I think they know that something can be done with this card. So, they're just trying to trying to curb that before it happens, which is understandable. And uh, I, I like this card. I think this is this is kind of all right. Uh, Noxious Rival doesn't really do the same thing because you have to have a draw step to do that. So. Uh, Game Trader 2. Thank you so much for the $10 donation. You said thanks for doing these series. Really appreciate it, man. This is the first time I've done them live on uh, Twitch. And they will also be going up on YouTube for anybody who misses them. All five, six, seven, eight, however many parts there are. There's going to be five colors, artifacts, lands, and gold cards. So uh, if you guys miss anything, just... Uh, yeah, so I guess, yeah, you could you could go Time Warp, then Noxious Revival so that you draw it during your next turn. That's totally true. Um, <laughs> whatever, whatever, buddy. Um, but yeah, I mean, this card, I, I like this card. I like the idea of this card. I think Instants and Sorceries are super strong, and I just want to go Flood of Recollection, Cruel Ultimatum, and then play Cruel Ultimatum again. So then it costs Black, Black, Blue, 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 Black, 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 Blue, 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 Red, Red. That seems good, right? Let's do that. Hornswoggle, like you do. Uh, two and a blue for an instant. Counter a creature spell. So this is actually literally just Essence Scatter that gives you a treasure. Which is kind of funny because it's kind of like a layaway card where you're like, listen, instead of Essence Scatter, I'll pay three mana. But I'm just putting one of these mana on hold until the next turn or whenever I want to use it later. It's like you're putting one extra mana into the bank and you're like, I'll use this at my leisure. Thank you. 
and uh, then you get to play that whenever. So you, you pay three mana instead of two, but then one of those mana gets rolled over like the singular minutes back in back in the 2000s, uh, and you get, you get it as a treasure token, which is fine. Um, so you can... Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, I think this is fine. I think you you probably play this in lit. I think this could see a home in constructed even. Uh, it ramps you from you counter the three drop and then it ramps you to uh, or you counter whatever they whatever you want and then it ramps you to five. So who who knows? Who knows? I think it has merit. I think it's a good card. We'll see. Induced amnesia three mana. I hate this card. So weird, dude. A rare enchantment when it enters the battlefield. Target player exiles all, exiles all cards from his or her hand face down, then draws that many cards. So if you have five cards in your hand, you can even do it to your opponent. They exile all five of their cards, and then they draw five cards, right? When induced amnesia is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, return the exiled cards to their owner's hand. So if you have a way to get rid of it... So if I say I, I play it in target myself, and I have three cards, I'll exile my three cards. Draw three cards. So I have three cards in my hand. If one of them is an Oblivion Ring, I can play the Oblivion Ring on the induced amnesia, it, 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 oh, it's when it put, it's put into a graveyard. So I guess Oblivion Ring doesn't work. I have to actually have a card that destroys Induced Amnesia. So we can use that that white uh, Destroy Vampire, Destroy Enchantment card. Let's say I'll, I'll play that on Induced Amnesia, and then I'll draw my three exiled cards. The strength in this card is that you're drawing the number of cards that you have. So if you have like six cards in hand, you put them away, you draw another six... And then if you have a way to get rid of induced, induced Amnesia, you draw your other six back. So you're actually netting the number of cards that you have in hand if you're able to get rid of Induced Amnesia. Which kind of, it's kind of like a memory jar kind of feel where you're like putting aside X number of cards, drawing X number of cards, and you get the, the original X back. But obviously you have, to, you have to work to do that. You have to have Induced Amnesia go to the graveyard. Um... I don't know. This card's interesting. I, I like the implications of it. And I think if you have uh, main deck cards that can deal with enchantments just for the sake of like, this could be like a draw five or a draw four. Um, or even if you don't, like you can still just be like, hey, I have no answers to what you have right now. So I'll just I'll just look for four more cards or whatever. Um, you can blink it with Brago, but it's when it's put into a graveyard. That's when you return the exiled cards to your owner's hand. So it, it doesn't have to... It's not when it leaves play. Uh, it's only when it's put into a graveyard. So... When it's... And it's target player exiles all cards from your hand then draws that many cards. Huh. That is interesting. I mean, I guess with Brago, you can just keep exiling it every single turn. So if they're like, yeah, draw six more, draw six more, draw six more. But... Um, I don't know. I like this card a lot. I think it's a super interesting mechanic. And it is one of the story spotlight cards. So that's interesting. It's got, you got Jason of Rask on there. Kite Sail Courser. Two on flyer for two. It can, it has flying as long as it's attacking. Man, this is fine. This is literally the opposite of the, the creatures that can only block, like, a, like Welkin Turn, that can only block a creature with flying. This guy can only block ground creatures, but it has flying when it's attacking. So it's like, they're two on flyers when attacking. Uh, Welkin Turns can only block creatures in the air. This guy can only block creatures on the ground. Was it two story spotlight cards in a row? No, it went Hornswoggle, then uh, Induced Amnesia. Hornswoggle wasn't one. Oh, the Flood of Recollection is. So you have Hornswoggle in between. Sure. Yeah, this guy's not going to see... Well, again, like Pirate Deck, maybe. It's a 2-1. One... It's a 2-power flyer for 2 mana that's a pirate. So, eh. It triggers Raid pretty easily because it's a flyer. So, yeah. I if there's a If there's a Pirate Deck... You got you got your two mana. You got your two man two mana man. Two mana man. Kumina's Awakening. Four mana for an enchantment. This art is really good. I like this art. Ascend. If you control ten or more permanents, you get the city's blessing for the rest of the game. At the beginning of your upkeep, each player draws a card. If you have the city's blessing, incidentally you draw a card. That is that I love. I love any kind of Phyrexian Arena ability. Uh, whether it's like Coercive Portal, Phyrexian Arena, Staff of Nin. These have always been some of my favorite effects in Magic. Um, because, not because like I don't want to draw 10 cards at once. I just want to draw one extra card a turn and have that small incremental advantage just 
overwhelm my opponent. And uh, this is a great way to do that. I never want to play this when I don't have the city's blessing, unfortunately. I never want us both to draw cards. Um, one thing to keep in mind, though, is at the beginning of your... It's, it's at the beginning of your upkeep. So it's not like Howling Mine, where you play this, your opponent gets the first draw. So it's more like uh, Dictate of Crufix, right? Where you can play on the end of their turn, and you get the, the ability of the first draw. And... So in this situation, like in this in this way, it's like, oh, you get the you get the first draw. They, you both draw at the same time, right? But you get the first use of that draw because it's your it's your upkeep. So I think this card's cool. Um, four mana is a lot, especially when you might just be giving your opponent a free card every turn. But you know, if you can get the city's blessing, drawing an extra card each turn, you have the city's blessing for the rest of the game, so you can't even lose it. Like, if you have 10 permanents, you get the city's blessing, and then you lose a permanent, you're still going to be the only one drawing a card each turn, which is pretty good. Um, I, I like this card, and it might be too slow and dirtily for standard, but I have my fingers crossed, so. Mist Cloak Herald, 1-1 one, one for 1 that can't be blocked. I see. Yeah, you're a merfolk, but no. Negate. Two mana. Counter a creature. Counter a non-creature spell. I will probably be using this negate as my default negate because of the art. She is one of my favorite artists. She is a friend of mine, and she is awesome. So. This is a card I really like, which is interesting. Nezahal Primal Tide. Seven mana. This card reminds me of Pearl Lake Ancient. Uh, so we have seven mana for a 7-7. Seven, seven. Cannot be countered. Okay, that's a good start. So I wouldn't slam my 7-7 seven, seven for seven. I, I'm, in my, I'm playing my control deck. What's the what's the flavor text? As, as one, nature lifts its voice to tell you this. No. Oh, that's pretty good. That is good flavor text. I need you to go back and read the negate flavor text out loud, please. Okay, we did. Actually, that's funny. We did right, right before you said that. Okay, so you have no maximum hand size, also relevant. Whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, draw a card. So as soon as they try to kill Nezahal, you draw a card. Doesn't matter how they do it. Oblivion Ring, you draw a card. Castaway, you draw a card. Uh, Murder, you draw a card. Whatever, doesn't matter. You draw a card. That's great. Discard three cards, which you'll probably have a bunch of because you have no maximum hand size and you're drawing cards whenever they cast a non-creature spell. So let's say you have nine cards in hand. You're probably going to be sandbagging lands because you uh, are playing a control deck and what you do is amass cards. And then since you have no maximum hand size, you can amass even more cards. Discard three cards, exile Nizahal, return it to the battlefield tapped under its earnings control at the beginning of the next end step. This is, this is all I ever wanted in a control card. You remember Pearl Lake Ancient? Pearl Lake Ancient was also like, okay, it did have flash. I understand. But the thing this guy has, or the, th the thing this guy has, the thing this this guy has going for it, I guess, is what I want to say, is that uh, you don't have to recast it. So if, if you return three lands to your hand to bounce Pearl Lake Ancient, you have to replay it. And you have to keep building up lands again. Um, this guy not only draws you cards, it can't be countered, and you just exile it. You're like, whoop, slide on out of here. And then he comes back, so you never have to replay it again. Um, I like this card a lot. I think this card's great. And um, I I look forward to a standard format where this is a great finisher. Uh, I think anyone who doesn't see the, the the control finisher applications of this, I understand that Approach of the Second Sun is a thing right now, but, um, you know, that's an Amiket thing. Eventually we're going to be in a format where Amiket's gone, but Ixalan is still in there, and maybe that's that's a potential. Um, but I, I like this card as a control finisher. Historically, this does a lot of the same things as a control finisher just did. Pearl Like Ancient was a nightmare to deal with uh, in cons of Tarkir. So, I mean, if you were able to uh, land a Pearl Like Ancient, it's almost it was almost impossible for your opponent to kill it. And I think the same is true with this, this card, only you never have to spend the seven mana on the next turn. You're not losing your lands. Uh, you're not like losing your 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 board advantage, and you're also drawing cards from it. And I think all of those are are pretty solid. And yeah, Hunter is Hunter is definitely dreaming in the background. If you <laughs> he does this all the time, he's like he'll start twitching when he's when he's sleeping. I like this card a lot, though. I think Nazahal is a super sweet card, and uh, you also windmill slam this unlimited as well. Just to be clear, 
Release to the wind, three mana rare instant. I like this card a lot too. Exile a non-land permanent. For as long as that card remains exiled, its owner may cast it without paying its mana cost. Um, so this does a couple things well. If your opponent has a blocker that they can't pay for, or they, I, guess they, I guess it's on your turn, you can just be like, during my turn, exile your blocker and attack you. Like it gets you through. Um, or if they're trying to kill one of your guys, you can exile it and just replay it whenever you want to. If you have a cool enters the battlefield ability, you can exile your guy. If you want to uh, rebuy an oblivion ring, you can exile that and then just replay it. I mean, this card has to, this card has a lot of cool applications. It exiles an online permanence for you or your opponent. And then your own, the owner of that can replay it. Uh, but it's an instant. It costs three mana. It's got a, it's got a good cost. that has a, a, a really unique ability. And uh, the price is right. So I don't know. This card seems really interesting. And you can exile cards that have counters on them. And they'll never get those counters back. So if your opponent has an Ivy Elemental, get that dude out of here. They can cast it again for one. Uh, but... No, they can't. They can't. They can't cast it for anything. They'll just they'll just cast about paying its mana cost, and then it'll die. That's sad, because uh, I'm I'm a big fan of Ivy Elemental Conservation, but you gotta do what you gotta do. River Darter, three mana, River Block, River Dart, three mana for a two three. So you got your uh, I don't know your traditional three mana two three. River Darter can't be blocked by dinosaurs. Let me tell you something, River Darter. I don't care. Congratulations on being a merfolk. You won the merfolk lottery. A riverwise auger. Four mana for a 2-2. Two, two. Ooh, you're, you're not looking good. When he enters the battlefield, draw three cards and put two cards from your hand on top of your library in any order. So this is a four mana 2-2 two, two that when he comes into play, you brainstorm. Is that good enough? Probably not. Dude, I, don't, I just don't care about playing... I don't want to pay four mana for a two-two. It nets me no card advantage. Um, it nets you. It draws you a card. That's not true. It draws you a card. It's a two-two for four that draws you a card. But then it, you also kind of like brainstorm lock yourself. I don't know if that's relevant though, because all the cards on the top you're going to draw anyway. So now you're just one. You're one. It puts you one turn closer to whatever that bottom card would have been, right? So, you know, if the if the third card you draw was the relevant card. That you needed? Sure. I don't know if I'm going to pay four mana for a 2-2. I think you're probably in, in bad shape. If you want to put this in your Brago Commander deck, that seems okay, and I'll support you for doing that. But, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. These Merfolk think they can they can just get by on their Merfolkness, and I don't see that happening. Oh, I'm a Merfolk, so you're just going to put me in your Merfolk deck. And I'm like, no, man, you need to actually pull your weight here, buddy. I got, a, I got Merfolk lined up around the block for your job. They're coming for your job. And, uh, you know, if you don't if you don't put your back into it, you don't, you don't make the cut. You don't make the Merfolk cut. Sailor of Memes. Three mana for a 1-4. When enters the battlefield, create a colorless treasure artifact token. Isn't this dude already in Ixalan? This dude is getting around, man. This dude is in every port there is. Sailor of Means, already next. This is the same card. Why did you? Why are you the same card? I don't understand. Yeah, Sailor of Means. Is that a problem? How's the old Hunter guy doing? You can you can see him. He's right back there. He was dreaming. He was having some dreams. One thing I like about Sailor of Means is that, um, whenever there's a new set, I collect four of every common and uncommon for play sets. I bought. I put them in a box. And um, it's nice that I can have four Ixalan Sailor of Means and four rivals of Ixalan Sailor of Means because it's nice to have eight cards that I'll never play instead of just four. So that's cool. I do appreciate that aspect. And uh, let's move on. Sea Legs. Sea Legs. Sea Legs. What did they say for reasons? What, what reason did they give that they were reprinting stuff from Ixalan and Rivals? It's super weird. Oh, they wanted to make draft sealed more consistent? All right, well, whatever. One mana. Jordan Osaka has some sea legs, I bet. One blue mana. Flash, enchant a creature. Enchant a creature gets plus O plus 2 as long as it's a pirate. Otherwise, it gets negative 2, negative O. This is fine. 
you're not gonna play it in you're not gonna play this in you're probably not gonna play this in limited or standard to be quite honest with you but cards like uh what's that card that gave negative three negative zero like it was like spontaneous something do you guys know what i'm talking about Spontaneous mutation. It was a uh, it was an Eldritch Moon card. It gave, it was a flash. It gave negative X, negative zero, where X is the number of cards in your graveyard. That card did see some play. So there's definitely a precedent for cards like blue cards uh, that deal with toughness only, and they, they just leave the guy on the board. It's hey, you got a three three. I'll just give it negative two, negative oh, whatever. I don't care because uh, you know usually when it's sitting on the board, it doesn't really matter. Um, plus your sea legs would count towards your ascend. I don't know if this is the case. Um, because when you're playing pirates, which you probably are if you're playing this card, I don't think you want to keep your opponent's guys on board because you just want to be able to kill. You just want to be able to attack and raid, right? So if you're like, oh, I'll give you a negative two, negative oh, and now it's a one five and just, I'll attack right into it. And like, okay, cool. Anyway, I, I feel like I said a lot about, uh, about sea legs. And uh, I don't, I don't really care about it that much. So we're just gonna keep moving. Hunter, what do you think about sea legs, buddy? All right, good talk, good talk. Sea floor oracle, four mana, two blue blue, for a merfolk wizard at two three. Whenever a merfolk you control does combat to a damage to a player, draw a card. I like this, but I don't like it costing. Why do these cards all cost four mana? Like, four mana for the one that makes two one ones. Four mana for the one that brainstorms. Four mana for the one that draws you... For the, 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 the two, three that draws you. These all cost four mana. All these, like... All these, like, Merfolk engine cards? Why do they have four? They cost four mana. I don't understand. I, I like this card. It turns all your, all your Seafloor Oracles into Ophidians or, or Shadow Mage Infiltrators or whatever. You know, pick your... It's almost Edric, right? Except it costs four mana. And it's only Murph. Um, I think if this was three, this card would be bonkers. Maybe it's too good at three. Maybe that's the thing. Maybe if you have this card, Seafloor Oracle, at three mana, you just go turn one, like Curse Catcher, turn two, Lord. Maybe it's modern playable at three mana, and you're just refilling your hand. Even as a top end, I think it's still actually pretty good. Like, if you get in with, like, two dudes with, with Seafloor Oracle in play and draw two, like... I don't know. This card seems like it's probably... It's probably good enough. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I think this card's... This is a strong ability. And it's it's strong in the context of Merfolk, where you're going to be able to, like, draw more dudes and then re replay guys and attack for more and draw more cards. I don't know. Could be good. I uh, I would not be surprised if Seafloor Oracle saw its... So if there's a if there's a Merfolk deck, I would not be surprised if this saw a place in it. Especially because there are... Um, what is the Siren? The Siren's not a Merfolk, right? The 2-1? Two the 2-1 two Flyer from the first set? I think it is, actually. If it's like you... Let me know what you guys... Let me know if you guys know. And there's also, like, the other unblockable Merfolk, so... I don't know. Maybe this is the thing. Who knows? Secrets of the Golden City. Three mana. Card with Ascend. This card's actually good, I think. Draw two cards. If you have the City's Blessing, draw three cards instead. This card is great. Um, it's It's a Divination with Upside. Like, drawing three cards for three mana is actually pretty impressive. Like, wh that's insane, dude. Like, at the end of the... At the end, you're playing a control deck, and you have, like, ten lands in play, right? And you're just like, is that Logan Paul? <laughs> no, dude, he's not, he's not in Japan. Uh, harassing Japanese people, so you can tell it's not Logan Paul. Uh, haha, <laughs> I'm a strawberry. Um, but yeah, like this card seems utterly insane. Like I, you, you're playing divination in your control decks anyway for for draw two for three, and this is just a draw two for three where it's draw three for three. I don't even have to explain this card. I'm gonna just move on. You guys know what's up. This card's great. Oh, this card's terrible. Okay, well, <laughs> okay, there you go, there you go. Silvergill adept. Uh, it's two mana, two one. All right. We know what this guy does. This guy's amazing. We know, we know what it is. It's a great, it's the greatest merfolk of all time. It's a, it's the goat merfolk. Goat folk. Mergoat. Okay. 
Siren Reaver, Siren Pirate 3 2 for 4. It costs one less if you attack with a creature this turn. This actually, this card's actually aggressive. You play the two mana 2 1 with flying, and then uh, you attack with it, and then on turn three, you play the 3 2 with flying. Yeah, this card's very good. Three power flyer on turn three in standard is. I think that's actually just fine. I don't think you're going to be not playing this card if there's a pirate deck, so. Hi, Frank. I spent hundreds of. Um, 100, 100 on your bruise from Return to Ravnica to Cons. I just got back into Magic Guide Me. Uh, senpai. Nice. Um, so. We're just going through the set now. I don't know what's, what's going on as far as uh, standard come next week, but I'm looking forward to finding out because this set seems cool. I like this set a lot. And I think it adds a lot where Ixlan might uh, have fell short. Slippery Scoundrel. That sounds like my old friend Chris Furter. He's a Slippery Scoundrel. Three mana for a 2-2 two -two Human Pirate with Ascend. As long as you have the City's Blessing, it ha is, has X-proof and can't be blocked. That's pretty bad. Um, usually I'll mention if it's, if it's drafting standard or just overall. Most of my ratings are for Constructed. And if I say something's really good, um, I'll usually preface that with, where where I mean it uh, for for limited. This card is interesting. I mean, the problem is that, like, as a pirate deck, you probably don't want to get to 10 permanents because you want to finish the game relatively early. So I don't know if playing a 2-2 two, two for 3, even if it has Hexproof, even if it can't be blocked. Eh. I mean, I'll play this in limited. I think this is a fine limited card. It's a 2-2 two, two for, for 3, and it just you just might be... Um, it might just be good. It might just be good enough as a 2-2 two, two for 3 that with upside sometimes. So... Oh, yeah. Mossy Beard. I, no, this is definitely not a draft-specific set review. This is just my thoughts in general on the cards. Soul of the Rapids. Five mana for a 3-2 flyer. This is an interesting looking... I like this art. This is very World of Warcraft art. 3-2 uh, Hexproof flyer. That's it? Okay. I mean, that's actually... I, th I think this is actually... This would be scary and limited if there weren't so many flyers in limited. There's actually a ton of, of flyers in limited. I think the earliest you can get... Uh, you can probably get... Someone said, uh, Frank, how early do you think you can get City's Blessing turn five? You, you can probably get on turn four, right? Because you can go uh, land guy, land guy guy, land guy guy, or one guy. And then, like, as long as you play a, a permanent on turn one, two, three, and four with a land, if you play a second permanent on any of those turns, you have it. If so, if it depends on depends on the deck, obviously. Like, it depends on if you're, you're an aggressive deck or if you have a bunch of permanents or, you know, whatever. Uh, a bunch of cheap spells, rather, so I don't know. Like, yeah, Soul of the Rapids, never going to see playing Constructed. Uh, you, you'll probably maybe play it in your limited deck. I don't know if you will. Five. Oh, it does have Hexproof, so you can put good enchantments on it. That is a that is a true point. So, uh, especially because it has Hexproof and not Shroud. Um, I've been I've been very spoiled by Shroud recently because I'm playing a lot of Vintage Cube. So I'm like, Inkwell Leviathan, I can't put my enchantments on this guy. I can't splinter twin this. Why well, yeah, you wouldn't want to, but yeah, it's the principle of the thing. So yeah. Spire Winder. Uh huh. Four mana for a two three flyer with a send. Spire gets plus one plus so it's a it's a two three flyer for four. If you have a send, it's a three four flyer for four. Never gonna see constructed play. You probably play it in limited as a two three flyer for four, because that's a thing you play, and a three four flyer for four is just better. So Sworn Guardian, one, three, four, two mana. Time Stream Navigator, one, one for two mana. This is a card that's just taking extra turn. Ascend if you control the number four. Blah, blah, blah. Four mana and a tap. Put Time Stream Navigator on the bottom of its owner's library. Take an extra turn after this one. Activate this only if you have the city's blessing. So. Oh, I like this a lot. Um, it's a one-one. It's very fragile. You have to have a you have to have the city's blessing to activate it, and it does cost four mana and a tap, so it has to stay in play for a turn to activate it. But it is, it is a time walk card. Uh, 
I don't know. I like it. I like it. I don't know. That's like to me, me liking it has no bearing on how good it is, right? Like I'm a I'm a person who will try to play this card along with Ali and Trazi and um you know, whether that means it's good, whether that's gonna be a top tier standard card, I can't say. I, I, I don't think that's true. But um I, I think it's cool. I think all the all the, all the creatures like this that have these really obscure abilities that let you take an extra turn. If a card says take an extra turn, you've piqued my interest. So Warkite Marauder. Two mana for a two one flying. Whenever Warkite Marauder attacks, target creature defending player controls loses all abilities and has base power and toughness 01 until end of turn. Okay, that's fine. This is actually a great pirate. This is actually a great pirate. This is a 2-1 for... This is a much better flying pirate. So this... The, the other one might have been the 2-1 the, the that we played initially. Um, the uh, the 2 one pirate that has flying when attacking the Kite Sail Corsair. But this guy is just so much better. This is just a 2-1 for 2 that, that always has flying. And uh, when it attacks, you can just make any one of their guys an 0-1 until the end of the turn. So they can't block it. If it's a flyer, you're always going to trigger raid. This card is strong. This is a strong pirate. So um, I, I... This is... You will always play this in limited, probably, and you will always play this in your pirate constructed deck. So, water knot, three mana enchant creature. It enters the battlefield. Tap the dude. I like that. I like when you have a blue enchantment that taps the dude, especially when it doesn't untap. Yeah, this is what you want. This is actually great blue removal. Um, tap enchanted creature, and it doesn't untap. That's perfect. The worst is like when you just have the uh, target creature doesn't untap during its uh, its opponent's its controller's untap step, and you're like. Well, I guess you just never tap it. So you can just... Now I just gave you a 6-6 six, six blocker. Or you have to take a hit from it first. And you're like, I guess I'll take 6 and then I'll play it next turn. And it puts you off tempo. Um, the reason it's just Claustrophobia, why not reprint? Because you want different cards. Claustrophobia probably doesn't have the Rivals of Ixalan flavor. There's no, like... Um, there's no flavor for Claustrophobia, really. So I guess they felt like Water Knot was better. And also it lets you play more cards in Popper. So... Um, <laughs> Why are you being strangled by water in Ixlan, Frank? I, I can see that resemblance. That's actually kind of funny. Except his beard is a lot darker than mine, unfortunately. Um, yeah, so now you have eight copies of Claustrophobia and Popper, or you can put uh, two different ones in your cube like this. There's, there's a bunch of different reasons why you want two similar... Uh, two of the two of the identical cards. You want functional reprints of, of cards with different names. So... Yeah, all right, and those are the blue cards from Rivals of Excellent. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't done so, hit those like and subscribe buttons right on the bottom. Really appreciate that, and I'll see you next time.